Hello guys, I hope you are having a good time today. Let me welcome you to MJ School of Mining and Geology YouTube channel. Today we are taking you through sedimentary facies as described by Johannes Walther. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Ever wondered what exactly is this sedimentary facies? Well, don't be like this guy and forever be confused. Ride with me from the very first to the end. Stay tuned for more captivating content like this. The term facies is widely used in geology, particularly in the study of sedimentology in which sedimentary facies refers to the sum of the characteristics of a sedimentary unit. These characteristics include the dimensions, sorting, and rounding. The other characteristics in include sedimentary structures, grain sizes, types, and color. Color can be very useful in the interpretation of depositional environments. Black color indicates deposition in the absence of oxygen in either the ocean, lakes, or swamps. However, on the other hand, red color indicates deposition in the presence of abundant oxygen in a warm, humid terrestrial environment and biogenic content of the sedimentary rock. Walther's Law of Facies states that the vertical succession of facies reflects lateral changes in environment. Conversely, it states that when a depositional environment migrates laterally, sediments of one depositional environment come to lie on top of another. This law proposes that what can be seen laterally can also be seen vertically. A classic example of this law is the vertical stratigraphic succession that typifies marine transgressions and regressions. Facies migrate laterally with changes in sea level. Rising sea level is called transgression. This is shown by marine facies overlying non-marine facies fining upwards, e.g. limestone on top of the sandstone. But falling sea level is regression where non-marine facies overlie marine facies coarsening upwards where sandstone is on top of limestone. Marine regression is a geologic event in which areas of the seafloor are exposed above sea level, thus changing the coastline. This happens when a shoreline moves away from the land onto the ocean due to drop in sea level. Regressions can be caused by an actual drop in sea level that may be caused by glaciation or by a rise in the Earth's crust caused by tectonic movements, that is, tectonic uplifting. Regression can be caused by no rainfall, increase in temperature, increase in land mass due to earthquakes or tectonic plate movement and a buildup of icebergs in the polar ice caps. A regressive sequence occurs as sea level goes down relative to the coast of a continent, resulting in either limestone at the bottom, shale in the middle, and sandstone on top or sandstone at the bottom overlain by conglomerate. This can be seen in many layers of sedimentary rocks, as long as there is coarsening upwards of rocks. It is widely seen in Transvaal and Witwatersrand supergroups of South Africa. Regressive sequences are less likely to be preserved in the rock record than are transgressive sequences. This is because, as sea level falls, the exposed parts of the continent, which had previously been below sea level, are exposed above sea level and more subjected to the forces of weathering and erosion. Therefore, the sediments are likely to be removed by earth processes rather than kept buried and preserved within the earth. Marine transgression is defined as the migration of shoreline out of a basin onto land during rise in sea level. A transgression can result in sediments characteristic of shallow water being overlain by deeper water sediments. Transgressions can be caused by the land sinking or by the ocean basins filling with water or decreasing in capacity. This can be also be caused by melting of ice caps. Therefore, as sea level gradually rise relative to the land over a span of time that took over a million years in that area, the sea level starts to grow deeper. Thus, an increase in sea level in an area results in the water energy decreasing, allowing the deposition of finer grain sediments in the same area. This means what is in the deep sea, usually calcite, will be pushed towards the land during rise in sea level, overlapping the shale, the shale will overlap the sandstone at the beach. As a result, a sandstone which was initially at the beach because of the overlapping of sediments will be found at the deep sea, hence fining upward. In conclusion, sedimentary facies and many other things such as facies analysis, sedimentary structures, and many other are used by geologists to reconstruct the past climate. Thank you for joining us in this fascinating sedimentological topic.